Welcome. You're listening to the Healthy Moving Podcast, the show all about helping you to exercise less, but move more so you will feel better. I am your healthy moving enthusiast, Jen Hoffman of stayathomeyoga.com. You know, most people begin a journey to improve their health because they want to be smaller. They want less of something, less weight, less stress, less pain. While I completely understand those desires and motives, they're rarely the impetus for lasting change. Today, I'm going to convince you that you really want to be bigger. So stick around. When I was in college, one of my friends, Mary, was an exchange student from Australia. She was studying business with me, but she had a hobby, a passion really, that she devoted every free moment to. Mary was a potter. When I went to her apartment for the first time to work on a group project one Sunday afternoon, I was mesmerized. It was filled with the most beautiful pottery. I asked her about her work, and I'll never forget her reply. Making vessels is my passion, she said. I kind of chuckled and told her that in the States, we call it pottery. She laughed and said, I know. I call them vessels because I love my work the most when I see it in use, holding something. When I sell a piece, I always ask people to tell me what they plan to put inside it, and I ask them to send me a picture. I know pottery can be art alone, but my passion is to make vessels that are used to add beauty to function. Now, as an aside, I spent about two hours this week trying to locate Mary to see if she was still making vessels but sadly I couldn't find her. So let's all imagine together that right now Mary is sitting at her potter's wheel somewhere beachside in Australia. I've loved the word vessel ever since that Sunday afternoon. In fact, I'm often trying to be a bigger vessel myself. Now I know in the health and fitness industry, so much of the messaging is about being smaller, not bigger. But I have found tremendous power in reframing my intentions. And I think you will too. Instead of focusing on what you want less of this week, I'm asking you to think about what you'd like more of. What would you like to be a bigger vessel for? Energy? Peace? Ease? Health? Vitality? Or maybe you need to reframe an intention that doesn't directly relate to your health at all. Last year, before my family moved 900 miles from Virginia to Florida, we got rid of many of our possessions. I found it so helpful to focus on why. I wanted to be a bigger vessel for empty space, for margin. As I sold, gave away, and donated, I didn't think about what I was losing but instead what I was gaining. This week, be a bigger vessel. One of my favorite ways to feel this physically is with the breath. We are often a small container for our breath with shallow chest breathing. You can see this. Put one hand on the top of your shoulder and just breathe as you normally do. Do you feel the upper chest and shoulder elevate with each breath? This common breathing pattern that so many of us have weakens the core. It creates excess neck and shoulder tension, and it can even contribute to our stress and anxiety. Instead, we can become a bigger vessel for the breath by using our intercostal muscles. When we call upon them, these little muscles between the ribs rotate each rib open so that Our thoracic cavity literally gets bigger to draw more breath in. Place your hands on the sides of your rib cage right now. Let your thumbs reach around to the back and your fingers reach around to the front. Now inhale. See if you can let the ribs expand into your hands. In the front, on the sides, 
and in the back. Then exhale and let the ribs relax back to neutral. Try a few rounds of this breath several times a day this week. Begin to change your breathing habits and become a bigger vessel for the breath. Now I have a special treat for you. I made a quick video demonstrating this breathing technique. It's absolutely free. To get your hands on it, you just have to text the word VESSEL to 33444. That's V-E-S-S-E-L to 33444. Friends, your body is a vessel that has tremendous power to add both beauty and function to your life. Be a bigger vessel, not a smaller one. Okay, I'll be back in just a moment for this week's Q&A. Today's question comes from Suzanne, but it's one of the most common questions I am asked. Suzanne says, I've recently become aware of the importance of squatting. How many squats should I do a day? I absolutely agree that squats provide some pretty amazing movement nutrients, and I love them. But I kind of get a little twitchy when people want me to prescribe a daily recommended prescription for any exercise or movement. That's the very framework I try to break us all free from. Instead, I'd like you to think about the ways you can weave squatting into your life. See, I do variations of a squat each time I pull a load of laundry out of the dryer or get something off a low shelf, when I investigate something on the ground while I'm walking with my kids, and even when I take a bathroom break. Yes, we have squatty potties at all of the toilets in my house. So Suzanne, squat when life calls for it. I'm betting you'll start to hear the call more now that you're listening for it. You know I love answering your questions. It absolutely thrills me when I see that I have a new message from someone. You can leave me one with your question by clicking the Start Recording button over at HealthyMovingPodcast.com or by calling 201-580-MOVE. If you're enjoying the show, I have a favor to ask. Would you please head to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review? That helps others to find us, and I read and appreciate every single one of those reviews, like the awesome one from Amberlina42 this week. Thank you so much, Amberlina. And thank you for listening. Until next week, friends, keep moving. <laughs>